Hi, in a recent uh, teardown video, power supply teardown, I mentioned um, that a cheap, simple and very common way to um, uh, decrease the resistance and increase the current handling capability of PCB traces is to leave the solder mask off and uh, let the wave solder apply extra solder to the trace like this. And uh, there were quite a few uh, people who said, well, that's really not going to make a huge difference at all, um, if anything. Well, and uh, I, I, I think they're wrong. It's a common technique that's been used for a long time. But, you know, I don't know if anyone's actually done the numbers on it. So I thought I'd do a video actually uh, trying to measure the difference. Unfortunately, Mike at Mike's Electric Stuff has beat me to it. He's already done a video uh, checking just this. He uh, did some measurements uh, before and after he took off um, the solder actually solder wicked it off and uh, did some measurements. I think he got a figure of like a 40 to 50 uh, percent um, uh, decrease in the resistance of the uh, trace due to the uh, solder on there, which is quite significant. Um, you know, so it, it definitely does make a difference as you'd expect. Uh, but I uh, noticed an issue with uh, Mike's video in that, obviously, um, he started with a board like this, which already had the uh, solder on it. And as you can see, it's it can be quite inconsistent, this process. Um, you know, some, like in some areas, it'll be big and lumpy. Others will be very thinly coated like that. So, you know, it's a very hit and miss uh, thing, but it is a cheap and simple way to do it. Anyway, Mike uh, started with a board like this with the solder already on it and then went to wick it off and remove it all. And um, I think that's, uh, you know, a back to front way to do it and uh, can incre and can probably um, have significant uh, error involved in there because I don't think there's any way you can possibly solder wick off all of the uh, solder on there and be left with your original copper because copper is only, standard copper on a board like this is only uh, one ounce uh, copper and uh, that is 35 microns thick. It's very, very thin. So I thought the correct way to do it is to, uh, or a more accurate uh, way, so we can get some more measurement data, is to start off with a standard one ounce copper clad board with a single trace of a known uh, thickness like this, and uh, then take some measurements of that, of course, and then add the solder to it and see what the change is. And that should give us um, more accurate uh, readings than what Mike got. So let's give it a go. I've got some uh, Farnell uh, Vera board here and it's uh, part number 147899 and I had to look up the uh, MSDS actually the material safety data sheet to get the thickness but it is standard one ounce 35 micron copper. So let's give it a go. And as I mentioned in uh, my power supply video and uh, Mike mentioned as well, there are other ways uh, to do it apart from uh, add solder to the traces, how to get increased current handling capability um, in your traces. That's to use thicker copper, either two ounce or uh, even four ounce uh, copper. But the issue with that is A, it's very expensive to do. And uh, B, uh, if you've got a mix of very high power power supply stuff on one part of your board and very uh, dense stuff on another part of your board, say you've got a BGA or a you know, a very fine pitch quad flat pack or something like that, um, then etching away four ounce copper, um, you know, to those sort of tolerances required for very fine traces can be very uh, difficult, if not impossible. So you can't sort of mix and match high power stuff with high density stuff using that thick copper. So this is a real cheap and uh, simple way to do it. And of course, that's the reason most manufacturers will do this uh, very common in power supplies is because it's cheap, simple, and you effectively get it for free. Now, of course, to do these measurements properly, you've got to use what's called four wire resistance measurement. Um, and I've uh, done this in previous videos, you've seen it, and uh, we'll do uh, two different uh, methods of four wire. We'll use my uh, HP 3478A, and then we'll also um, do the manual method of uh, passing the constant current through and measuring the voltage drop with a multimeter just to get, you know, two different measurements to make sure we're consistent. So a four wire measurement basically 
means that uh, you have a drive wire, which is this one, and then you have a sense wire as well. So that um, when it's driving current through these leads, you're going to get a voltage drop and an error along these leads. But if you have this sense wire, which is tapped right at the same point like that, then you're measuring the voltage directly off there. And because there's no current, you've got a high impedance multimeter measuring this. There's no voltage drop along this wire. It measures the exact uh, resi the exact voltage drop across your trace like that. So it is the most accurate way to measure resistance like this. And of course, we've got that on both ends of the board like that. So we've got one at that end and one at this end, four wires. We can drive it with a constant uh, current or with a, a four wire multimeter like a HP 3478A. So we've got two drive wires and two sense wires. Let's give it a go. And just for the record, the length here from uh, sense point to sense point is uh, 358 millimeters or thereabouts. The uh, thickness is approximately 4.2 millimeters. And for those curious to know the difference between four wire and two wire mode, if we switch to two wire, we get much higher, 220, uh, 212 milliohms, because all of the uh, it's measuring all this wire in series with it. But you switch to four wire, and it effectively cancels out any resistance in these wires and the contacts and things like that. Actually, that's come down a bit, maybe due to uh, you know it was still a bit warm from the soldering, perhaps. Anyway, 51 milliohms. And what I've got here, I'm now passing a constant current of one amp through this uh, trace and I'm measuring the voltage drop from the sense wires. And as you can see, 51 millivolts for one amp. You use Ohm's law, that's 51 milliohms. It's spot on to our HP 3478A meter uh, four wire terminal resistance measurement. So we've got two different uh, measurements confirmed. This trace is definitely 51 milliohms. Now we can add some solder see what the difference is. And the solder I'm using today will be standard multi-core brand 6040. None of this lead-free rubbish, just your traditional 6040. So let's give it a go. Um, I'm not going to go all the way right to the end, right to the tip there, because I don't want to, you know, upset my uh, uh, measurement, um, uh, upset my connection there. So I'll go most of the way and I'll put a very thin coat on to begin with. So let's give it a go. This will be and probably, you know, a thin, and then I'll spread it along, and you'll see the resistance jump all over the place due to uh, once this uh, copper heats up, it changes its resistance, of course, and so does the solder. So, uh, really, we need to let it uh, settle down, but we've got 51 mil milliohms there, so let's, let's give it a go. Well, that's rather surprising. It's not uh, nearly as much as I uh, thought it would be. It's a relatively thin uh, coating on here, but I get a, uh, basically it's dropped to 43.2, uh, 43.3 milliohms. And uh, I calculate that as basically a 15% uh, decrease in r resistance and, uh, uh, or a 17% increase if you want to uh, do the way Mike did. And I checked uh, Mike's numbers again and he got a 40% increase. So mine's only 17%, he got 40. So he must have had a lot more solder on there, I can only presume, or he got a 28% decrease. I'm getting a 17, 15% uh, decrease. But it's still, it's um, relatively significant considering that you get it for free. Like you don't actually, you know, you have to, all you have to do is leave your solder mask off. And it's, uh, you certainly wouldn't rely on the fact because uh, it wouldn't be consistent. But anyway, I think what I'm going to do is put another layer on, make it really thick and globby, and uh, see what we get. And it's, uh, it's, it's actually cooled down, by the way. It's, as you can see, it's pretty stable. It took about, you know, a few minutes to cool down at least. So let's apply some more solder. And you can see my coat in there. It is relatively uh, thin. It probably maybe looks a bit thicker than what I on uh, camera, perhaps. But yeah, I, let's... Uh, Let's add it. Let's go much clumpier, like down here. So I started to add some. Let's do some more, even clumpier than that, I think. 
All right, now we're talking 26.2 milliohms. So, you know, we've basically, that's like a 94% uh, increase in the resistance if you're talking in the way Mike did it or a 48% uh, decrease in resistance uh, practically you know double and half so and really I don't think my solder is as thick as I'm not sure how that looks on camera but really I'm not sure it's nearly as thick as what you know has accumulated on this board after the wave soldering process and you know that's uh, that's fairly typical of a board after it's uh, you know been uh, uh, wave soldered like that and tin. So you know I think yeah it's basically um, we're talking you know you have the resistance um, pretty much. So that's a better result than what Mike got. Much better. He only got a um, a forty percent increase in resistance or a twenty eight percent decrease. I'm getting a fifty percent decrease. And I know what you're thinking. Can we? get it back to normal and do what Mike did and remove all the solder and get it back to 51 milliohms. Well, let's give it a try. And that's basically what's left after uh, trying to wick it all off. I could probably get a little bit better than that, but gee, you know, you could do this thing until the cows come home, but there's, yeah, trust me, there's really not much uh, solder left on that at all in terms of uh, physical height anyway. Okay, I've done my darndest to uh, suck all that uh, solder off the strip and we're back to 52 milliohms or thereabouts. Going to be a little bit of uh, error in there, but I, and I may have even, um, you know, because phys I physically scraped along with the stuff. So maybe it actually takes off, you know, a little bit of uh, copper in there or something. You know, maybe it even leaches it uh, out. Maybe it even leaches a bit of copper out. I don't know the uh, chemical uh, process precisely but anyway we're basically back to where we were so um, that pretty much uh, validates uh, Mike's uh, technique of starting out and removing the uh, solder as well but I think our one was a little bit more uh, accurate because we did start off with the known uh, quantity with the one ounce copper so there you have it tinning a PCB trace <laughs> we've done some I think reasonably controlled measurements here so you can be pretty confident of these results. We got anywhere from a 15% to a 50% decrease, a halving of the resistance by just uh, tinning the trace with 6040 lead solder. It, it'll differ with the uh, tin stuff, but that's a nice ballpark, that 50% uh, figure. Mike got a figure of 28% uh, uh, decrease in resistance. We were able to get uh, better than that. So there you go. It's going to be somewhere within that range. So it does actually make a difference. And considering that you can do this for free by just removing the solder mask and getting the uh, solder, you know, put on there by the wave solar in process, it's, you know, it's not a bad technique. It's, um, and that's why people have used it for a long time. It's cheap and well, it's effectively free. So, and it does work, but you can't rely on it though, because as you see, there is a quite a big spread in there. And uh, even if you leave a very thin coat of solder on there, it, it really doesn't uh, do much at all. You've got to have at least a, you know, a reasonable amount on there. When you try and suck it all off, it basically goes back to the same as the copper. But that's very interesting result. I don't know if uh, anyone's actually done that before. So it's, uh, it pretty much uh, confirms Mike's results as well. So there you have it, some conclusive results and a bit of an industry rule of thumb there. I like it. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Catch you next time.